The Faith at Work movement is on a cusp, destined for great things. God uses people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of professions to advance His kingdom. Work is a crucible that God uses to refine us. Everybody's work matters to God. The only thing that really brings lasting change is the gospel of Jesus Christ applied to every area of life. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Are you overwhelmed by Jesus Christ? Well, I come from a long line of lawyers. Both my grandfathers were lawyers. My father's a lawyer. I have a brother and sister that are lawyers. Uh, we think it might be a genetic thing, or some have suggested a genetic defect. <laughs> but ever since the third grade, I always knew I was going to be a lawyer. I had my junior size briefcase, and I never shied away from a good argument. But then I went to college, and my personal faith grew. And so did my desire to serve God with my whole life. So like many others, I came to that inevitable conclusion that if I really, really wanted to serve God, I had to abandon my dream of becoming a lawyer and go and become a pastor or missionary or a Mother Teresa type. So I decided to go to seminary. So I went and I told my father of my plans. I said, I don't want to waste my life being a lawyer. I said that to my attorney father. <laughs> and so I went off to seminary. And I had no idea how it might turn out. But I was determined I was going to serve God. And one day, one of my seminary professors came up to me, and he says, what do you want to do when you graduate from seminary? It's a good question. I really wasn't sure, and I said, I, I don't know. I don't see myself as a pastor. I really don't like people all that much, and I'm not very empathetic. And I'm pretty outspoken, so I'll probably get run out of any church that I might go to. And I'm really not the missionary type. So this rather perplexed professor then asked me another question. He said, well, what did you want to do before you came to seminary? So I kind of put my head down and I, I confessed that I, I wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> and I thought he'd be so disgusted with that answer. But instead he asked this very interesting and provocative question. He said, don't you think that God needs Christian lawyers? Wow, what a question. Could God really use me as a Christian lawyer? Now, I know for some of you that's a contradiction in terms, Christian lawyer. <laughs> but the reality is that that changed my thinking as this godly professor explained to me the whole notion of calling in Christian ministry and that God uses people from all kinds of walks of life in all kinds of professions to advance his kingdom, it changed my way of thinking and it changed my life. So I finished seminary and I went to law school and I went back and I joined my father's law firm. He'd forgiven me for my wasting my life comment. <laughs> and for 16 years I engaged in private practice where I realized how this really works because a lot of people don't go to church but everybody interfaces with the marketplace. So I got to serve business owners and doctors and many individuals up close and personal where they were hurting and where they needed someone to give them advice. Now I tell you that story because like many of you, you had to come to that realization that God needs and uses Christians in the marketplace. And then 10 years ago, I left my private practice and I joined Alliance Defending Freedom, an organization that defends people's rights to freely live out their faith because I have a passion to keep this space open, especially in the business community. So what I'd like to do today is share with you some ideas and some high-level concepts of how you in business can prepare yourselves to be a faithful and powerful witness for Jesus Christ. There are three C's for keeping your business faithful. Core values, confronting the challenge, and courage. Now I start with the premise that every business operates with a set of core values. There's a gospel according to Google. Starbucks has a set of guiding principles by which they sell coffee. But for some reason, the culture says that if you are 
a Christian business owner and you want to operate your business according to your Christian values, that you're not entitled to do that. And yet they have no problem promoting whatever values that they want. But we know that's neither right nor true. So the first thing you have to do is you need to identify what are your core values. What are those fundamental, non-negotiable things by which you're going to operate your business? These are your guiding north stars that tell you how you're going to make decisions and operate. They're not for sale, and you'd rather go out of business than to compromise them. These are your hills to die on. And the time to determine that is now. If you wait until you've got a disgruntled employee or an angry customer, or worse, the government sues you, it's probably too late. So write them out. Put them in your bylaws. Reference them in your employee handbooks. Reflect them in your vision statement. You can even embroider them in your company uniforms. And they don't have to be complicated. They can be very simple. I love some of the vision statements that reflect these kinds of core values. From around here, you have interstate battery. To glorify God and enrich lives as we deliver the most trustworthy source of power to the world. Isn't that great? You can almost boil that down to, we serve a higher power. <laughs> or nautique boats. Building boats to the glory of God. How clear is that? If the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever, why not throw a boat in there? <laughs> Bonus. But once you identify your core values, then you need to prepare for the coming conflict. Because the fact of the matter is, if you operate your business according to your core values, somewhere along the line, somebody's going to complain and object. Just ask Chick-fil-A when they took their pro-family view and were under attack. Yet they still maintain the highest customer satisfaction rating in the, in the industry. But businesses like Chick-fil-A and others shouldn't be punished and threatened and harassed for simply exercising their constitutionally protected rights. And it's important to understand where those rights come from. Our founders talked about inalienable rights, which were endowed by our creator. And this is important, because if your right to exercise your faith in your business isn't there because the government gives you a permission slip, that means that your right precedes and transcends government. And if the government didn't give you those rights, then the government has no authority to take them away. And that should help you prepare to confront the challenge. Which brings me to the third C, courage. It takes courage to do the right thing. It takes courage to stand firm in your faith in an ever-increasingly challenging culture. But there are a number of things that you can do to mentally prepare yourself. Basically, you have two options when confronted with the challenges. You have the option of fighting or forfeiting. And I'd rather fight and take my chances of winning than forfeit and lose for sure. Sadly, people give up way too easily in this day and age. 1 Timothy 4.7 reminds us that God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but one of power and love and self-discipline. And sometimes having courage means being bold and going on the offense. When Hobby Lobby was confronted with Obamacare, which would have forced it to subsidize abortion-causing drugs and devices in its health care plan, it had the courage to take on the federal government, even in the face of crippling fines, which could have put them out of business if they'd lost their lawsuit. They had the courage to do the hard thing when it might have been easier to give in or give up. But they had the courage to take their case all the way to the United States Supreme Court, which thankfully they won at, thus paving the way for so many other businesses to live out their faith freely in their businesses. Sometimes having courage just means to operate your business on a daily basis according to your core values. 
You know, sadly, a lot of business owners and business leaders that I've talked to think they have to hide their faith at work, even in businesses they own. One business owner said he didn't think he could celebrate Christmas with his employees because of the so-called separation of church and state. Really? Listen, if you are in business, there's a simple test for this. Ask yourself, am I a church? No. Am I a state? No. Okay, well, you can ignore that deceptive separation of church and state. And the good news is there are so many things you can do in your business that really don't even take much courage. You can have a Christian resource library for your employees. You can give them tickets to Christian events. You can hire a corporate chaplain, a great idea. You can decorate your offices with Bible themes and Bible verses. One business owner had Bible verses on his payroll checks. And sure enough, an employee complained. It's very simple. You tell that employee, take your payroll check, you rip it up into 100 pieces, and just throw it away. <laughs> if you're that offended. You can share your faith in your personal story. And you can have Bible studies as long as they're voluntary. The general rule is so long as you don't make embracing Christianity a condition of employment or advancement, and you provide reasonable accommodation, reasonable accommodations, you're going to be okay. And there's so much you can do. But you don't have to cave in at the slightest opposition. Have courage. And sometimes courage means standing with other businesses who have come under attack for not compromising their core values. At Alliance Defending Freedom, we represent a long line of Christian business owners who have come under attack. And I want to introduce you to one client who's had the courage to stand in the face of conflict because she knew her core values. Baronelle Stutzman is a florist in Washington State where she's had a, a florist shop for over 30 years. Baronelle loves flowers, and she loves people. And she had one customer for almost 10 years named Rob, who came into her shop quite often, and she became quite close to him. Now, Baronelle knew that Rob was involved in a homosexual relationship, but she loved him with the love of Christ, and she sold him a lot of flowers. So when Washington State redefined their laws to include same-sex marriage, of course, Rob came to Baronell and he wanted her to do all the flowers for his same-sex ceremony. But Baronell knew what her core values were, and as a follower of Christ, she knew that she could not use her God-given artistic talents to participate in the same-sex ceremony. And she explained that to Rob in very caring and loving terms. And there were plenty of other florists that could have helped him. Now, you would think that the people in the so-called tolerance side of things would have shown a little bit of tolerance towards Baronell. But instead, she was sued by the Attorney General of the State of Washington, as well as by Rob. And her litigation's been going on, and we continue to fight for her. But at one point, the state said, you know, we'll drop our lawsuit if you'll repent of your wicked ways and promise never to raise a conscience objection based on your faith again. We call that their 30 pieces of silver offer. Baronel declined, because Baronel would not compromise her core values. Even though she faces losing her business, her life savings, and as she sometimes jokes, even her dog, Dingo. She's got courage, and she's trusting God in this, because she's going to do the right thing. I want to show you a short video clip so you can see what the face of courage looks like. Take a look at this video. That was a real struggle to, to decide what to do with that. My husband and I talked it over and, you know, as much as I love Rob, I just couldn't, couldn't be a part of that. If I did Rob's wedding, it would be from my heart because I, I think he's a really special person and I would want to make it really special for him. So, 
It wasn't something that I flippantly said, oh, I'm not going to do Rob's wedding because he's gay. I have to have faith that he's going to protect me and uh, give me the courage and the knowledge and the wisdom to, to stand firm on this. But uh, it's also helped me understand what obedience is and what I'm going to cry <clears throat> and what following Christ is. You know, you can't, you can't sit on the fence like he says. You can't be lukewarm. As Baronel said, you can't sit on the fence. You can't be lukewarm. Sometimes doing the right thing means doing the hard thing. And each of us has been given a platform to be light in a very dark world. And if you're in business like Baronel, you have a very special opportunity to make a significant impact in the culture for the sake of Christ. What are you doing with those God-given opportunities? Because the world needs a lot more Baronel Stutzmans. So the question for you today is, will you be a Baronel? Thank you. <laughs>